carry on. <laughs> so the fundamental difference between us and the storage managed and, and other like the appliance or the array based yeah. solutions, we're software only. It's a very small software module, it's literally six megabyte, well seven megabyte distribution. You can uh, we can email, I can email it to you. Yeah. Um, it installs an apparent partition only. You don't need to do anything in the guest VM or any of the things we're provisioning, it's totally agnostic. And you don't need anything on the storage side. You can use any storage, you can use data core, you can use like AMC, you can use use JBODs, you can use Windows ser Server, anything that supports iSCSI, the Fiber Channel, ESATA, ESAS, yeah. uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So you can mix and match that. Yeah. Uh, what the data core does, data core provides services inside the box. Yeah. They install software that can go into like any any like Windows server, but you still need to have a dedicated box. That's right, yeah. That. yeah. And there are some pluses minuses for doing that, but the main minus is that once you kind of, and that's kind of like the main problem with any array-based solution, be yeah. that EMC, NetApp, data core, is that whatever the management you do, you have to do it inside the box, and the visibility and the flexibility of the management of the storage is limited to what you can do over the iSCSI interconnect. Okay. And yeah. there is actually very little. There is a granularity. For small scale environments, that's usually not a big or people who have a lot of dedicated admin stuff, that's a tolerable pain. But yeah. for people in the sort of a self service, self provisioning, self service portal, it's actually very kind of a big problem. So, what do we do with software only? We take it's kind of combination of the storage virtualization and the hypervisor storage management in one package. So, um, if you look at the inside, the, uh, sort of inside the box uh, layer, so it's a filter driver that installs an apparent partition, a bunch of services. Uh, we manage through WMI, and the product comes with the MMC snap in for the GUI. But anything we can do, you can PowerShell script it and okay. for the for the high end automation and very 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 scalable. Yeah. So you can think of us. We live above, right above the volume level, level uh, layer. So you know whatever the, your preferred hardware provider, your white box, whatever you can minimize the cost by choosing your sort of the disk provider. Yeah. yeah because as cheap as is possible, and we manage all the stuff. So on the upper side, we present VHDs. I guess the multiple VHDs. This picture is a little bit kind of deceiving, and I'll probably modify it. Yeah. Multiple VHDs, and there was a. They look and feel like a regular Microsoft VHDs, except they just a namespace object in our portal drive. And everything we do is by definition thinly provisioned, uh, no performance compromise. We support the limited number of clones and snapshot. Instant provisioning. What does that mean? Is uh, in a virtualized environment, it's a very typical workflow. It is you have a sort of a template uh, image of operating system your VM that you build, installed all the application in a hosting environment. You probably have several of those, the one for SharePoint guys, the one for Exchange, whatever. But you yep. have those templates. And then you're deploying it en masse. Yep. You know, you just like whenever you need a new one, you kind of boom, get it out of the template. Uh, the thing is, what happens today with VMM, for example, a standard VMM solution, you actually have to copy that image over. And A, it's going to take a long time because those images, even with all the compression and things, they're still up to 10 gigabytes. A, yep. it's going to take some time. B, all those images take a lot of space. Even though they're all the same, I mean, this template image, uh, the difference between different instances of the same template could be less than percent of the disk space, but you have to copy all of it. So now, a technology we call cloning, we do the instant provisioning of the new virtual machine images in literally instant. You know, we can show, I mean, so Steve comes back, he'll yeah. show you the demo when we provision 150 virtual machine in a matter of 40 seconds in the two node cluster. It's pretty impressive. And yeah. those images, they immediately available for booting up and operating yeah and uh, they do, the most important thing is they do not impose any performance penalty yeah there are a lot of snapshot technologies you see from people but they're all kind of all that they make those the snapshots only for backup so they designed to live for a very short time relatively short time in our case a clone is something that lives forever it's an image of your operating system that you deploy and the virtual machine and the people use it forever so that's kind of from that point of view it's kind of revolutionary solution in many ways so we look at our product as 
something that fundamentally enables Hyper-V to be used in a large scale sort of hosting an enterprise solution, yes. which is currently it lacks. So think about it as a replacement for CSV for large scale clusters okay. without like a CSV problem. Yeah. Uh, what fundamentally things, what it done performance, let me kind of walk you through uh, some of the internal things. We use the staging disk. It's a lot of kind of like the database and login techniques. We can go into those yeah. later. But I think what's important is to show you some of the, this is the test configuration I've been using, a very simple uh, fiber channel Zyrotec array, uh, native UK product. <laughs> and it's actually about like, you know, $5,000 for, you know, like several terabytes of storage. Yeah. It's a very commodity storage at this now. So what we do is, this is the performance comparison of a micro standard Microsoft configuration using the CSV cluster shared volumes with Versa. What I do, I run the iometer uh, benchmark, that's an industry standard benchmark. Yeah. Um, you probably know about it. Uh, that designed to emulate, uh, this is a profile designed to emulate kind of SharePoint server load. So it's a database server with a bunch of file I.O. thrown in the mix. Yeah. So, and then what I do is I run one, four, and eight virtual machines instance, uh, one uh, iometer instance in each of those VMs. And what you see is, as you start adding VMs to the configuration, the overall performance of the box goes down. Yep. Again, those numbers are combined throughput of all instances of the benchmark across all the VMs on the box. This is what we call the I.O. blender effect, and it results from the randomization of the I.O., the un unoptimized I.O. and the hypervisor. And it happens with Hyper-V, VMware, with anybody. We do it like we saw it for Hyper-V. So uh, by the time you get to 8 VMs in the load like that, you lose about half of your performance of your box just to randomization effect. Again, this is not, uh, you know, memory bound or anything like that. With Versa, we pretty much stay flat. We have one customer who took that number of VM to 50 and kind of saw like very gradual kind of degrade and, you know, decline in performance. Yeah. Uh, on, on the same configuration, if you cannot, on with the standard Microsoft solution, if you could not deploy more than 20 VMs on the same box, with us, you could push it to 60. Always, you know, always the performance management. So for like hosters, that essentially means I can triple my VM density on the existing hardware without buying anything and investing in storage, anything of that nature. So that's kind of direct, uh, like bottom line. And the situation is even kind of more um, dramatic if you start using the snapshots and the various kind of like advanced management features that you may or may not care about, but you will eventually. Yeah. With the standard Microsoft difference in DHD is uh, actually they, they're so bad that you know the, they kill performance immediately. In fact, Microsoft does not recommend those in the production systems, which is kind of fits the purpose of the feature in my opinion. But that's yeah, absolutely. With us, we kind of pretty much stay flat again and again, looking at architecture. Uh, the product is. Um, so, if you can kind of look at this lower uh, screen here, this is the console management for the product. It's actually snap in uh, to the Microsoft management console. As you can see, this is the Hyper V manager right here, yeah. and I have these virtual machines. And this is the Versa one. So we have the virtual disks, snapshots. The act of creating a virtual disk is kind of very simple, widget based. Um, so I say, you know, create a disk. Disk, um, you know, give it a name, disk, whatever, too. Um, I can easily create, you know, it's like how many terabytes you want. I want to create a 10 terabyte disk. Uh, so it's done, it's created. 10 terabyte, it's a thinly provisioned. The performance characteristics of those are the same as, a, you know, I showed you on, on this thing, so I can very quickly, t you know, do that. Um, Steve. So here is Steve. He can probably walk you through the sort of the massive deployment. Hey, how are you doing? So Good, thanks. You're Ryan, in, nice to meet you. So you're on camera, so. <laughs> Oh, okay. well, the screen so yes, in a minute. I love so that I went orange to camera. I think that's orange as well. Yeah. We don't have those here. <laughs>